Let's go, Michelle, and welcome to Thaouba. Outside the spacecraft, we walked along a very short walkway. Immediately, I felt lighter. The sensation was very pleasant, although somewhat disconcerting, since several times I lost balance and thou had to steady me. We saw no one, a fact that surprised me. Earthly perspective had led me to expect to be welcomed by a crowd of reporters, cameras flashing, or something similar, perhaps a red carpet. Why not the head of state in person? For heaven's sake, these people wouldn't be visited by an extraplanetarian every day. But nothing. After a short distance, we arrived at a round platform, to the side of the walkway. Thou sat down on a circular seat inside the platforms, and signaled that I should sit down opposite her. She took out an object the size of a walkie-talkie and immediately I felt myself pinned to the seat, just as I had been in the spaceship, by an invisible force field. Then, quite gently and with a barely perceptible hum, the platform rose by several meters and moved off rapidly towards the eggs, about 800 meters away. The thin and slightly perfumed air was lashing the exposed area of my face below my nose, which was very nice, its temperature being around 26 degrees Celsius. In just seconds, we arrived, and passed through the walls of one of the eggs, as if we'd passed through a cloud. The platform stopped and came to rest gently on the floor of the building. I looked around me in all directions. It seemed absurd, but the egg had disappeared. We had indeed, entered the egg, and yet around us, as far as the eye could see, stretched the countryside. We could see the landing ground and the docked spaceships just as though we were outside. I understand your reaction, Michel, said thou who knew what I was thinking, I'll explain the mystery to you later. It seemed that thou was also very popular here and she found herself answering numerous questions, always with her natural, broad smile. Before long, however, several of our hosts were required to resume their duties and we took this as our cue to leave. My mask was put on again and we left these people, as well as those in the larger room, amidst many gestures of friendship and goodwill. We rejoined our vehicle and immediately accelerated away in the direction of a forest, which could be seen in the distance. We flew at a height of approximately 5 or 6 meters and at a speed I would have estimated to be 70 or 80 kilometers per hour. The air was warm and fragrant and I again felt euphoric, in a way I had never experienced on Earth. We arrived at the edge of the forest and I remember having been greatly impressed by the size of the largest trees. They look to rise about 200 meters into the sky. The tallest is 240 of your meters, Michel. Thou explained without me having to ask, and between 20 and 30 meters in diameter at the base. Some of these are 8,000 of our years old. Our year consists of 333 days of 26 carses. A carse is a period of 55 lors, a lors comprising 70 casios, and a casio being almost equivalent to one of your seconds. Now there's a sum for you. Would you like to go to your apartment or to have a look at the forest first? Let's visit the forest first, thou. The vehicle greatly reduced its speed and we were able to glide between, or indeed, stop and observe more closely, the trees at heights that ranged from almost ground level to 10 meters above the ground. Thou was able to guide our flying platform with amazing precision and expertise. Our vehicle, and thou's manner of driving it, put me in mind of a flying carpet, which was taking me on a magical tour of this magnificent forest floor. Thou leaned towards me and removed my mask. The undergrowth was luminous and softly golden but I found it quite tolerable. It is a good time to begin accustoming yourself to the light and color, Michel. Look. Following her gaze, I spotted, very high among the branches, three butterflies, vividly colored and of enormous size. These Lepidoptera, which must have had one-meter wingspans, fluttered high in the foliage, but we were lucky to see them fly closer and closer to us, on wings of blue, green and orange. It is as clear to me as if it were yesterday. They brushed against us with their wings that were strangely fringed, to create the most beautiful and breathtaking effect. One of them came to rest on a leaf just a few meters from us and I was able to admire its body, ringed with silver and gold, and its jade green antennae. Its proboscis was golden and the tops of its wings were green with streaks of bright blue alternated with dark orange diamond shapes. The undersides were dark blue, but luminous, as though they had been illuminated from above by a projector. 
For the duration of time this giant insect remained on the leaf, it seemed to emit a soft whistling sound and I was quite surprised by this. I had certainly not heard a Lepidopteran on Earth make any sound at all. Of course, we were no longer on Earth but on Thauba, and this was only the beginning of a long series of surprises for me. On the forest floor grew an incredible variety of plants, each one stranger than the next. They covered the ground completely, but I noticed very few bushes among them. I imagine the forest's giants prevented them from developing. In size, these plants varied from a ground-covering moss-like plant, to one the size of a large rose bush. One kind, with leaves as thick as a hand in various shapes, sometimes heart-shaped or circular, sometimes very long and thin, was of a color tending much more towards blue than to green. Flowers of every shape and color, even of the purest black, entwined each other. From our altitude of several meters, the effect was absolutely glorious. We rose till we were up among the highest branches and I put my mask back on according to Thou's direction. We emerged from the canopy and moved slowly, just above the foliage of those enormous trees. Above the forest the light was, once again, incredibly intense and I had the impression of traveling through a landscape of pure crystal. Marvelous birds were perched on the tops of the taller trees, watching us pass, without fear. Their colors, varied and rich, were a veritable feast for my eyes in spite of the subduing effect of my mask. Here were varieties of macaw, with blue, yellow, pink and red plumage, and, among them a type of bird of paradise strutted amidst a cloud of what appeared to be hummingbirds. These hummingbirds were of a brilliant red color flecked with gold. The red, pink and orange tail feathers of the birds of paradise, would have measured 250 centimeters in length and their wingspans almost 2 meters. When these jewels took flight, the underside of their wings revealed a very soft, misty pink, with just a touch of bright blue on the tips, so unexpected, especially as the tops of their wings were of an orange-yellow color. Their heads wore plumes of impressive size, each feather being a different color, yellow, green, orange, black, blue, red, white, cream. I feel frustrated that my attempts to describe the colors I saw on Thauba are so inadequate, I feel I need a whole new lexicon, as my language fails me. I had the constant impression that the colors came from within the objects I looked at, and the color was more than I had known it to be. On Earth, we know perhaps 15 shades of red, here there must have been over a hundred. It wasn't only the colors that claimed my attention. The sounds that I had heard since we began to fly over the forest inspired me to seek an explanation from Thou. It was almost a background music, very light and soft, similar to a flute which continually played the same air but at a distance. As we moved on, the music seemed to change, only to return to the original tune. Is that music I hear? It is vibrations emitted by the thousands of insects which, when combined with the vibrations of the colors reflected by solar rays onto certain plants, such as the xenoxy, for example, produce the very musical results that you hear. We, ourselves, only hear it if we particularly attune to it, for it comprises an integral part of our life and our environment. It is restful, isn't it? Absolutely. According to the experts, if these vibrations were to cease, we would experience considerable eye trouble. This will perhaps seem odd at first, since these vibrations appear to be perceptible to the ear rather than the eye. However, experts are experts, Michel, and, in any case, it is of little concern to us, for they also say that the chance of their ceasing is as remote as the chance of our sun extinguishing itself tomorrow. Thou turned our vehicle and in a few moments, we had left the forest tops and were flying over a plain, across which flowed a jade green river. We descended to an altitude of about three meters and followed its course. Now we were able to follow the movements of strange fish, fish that resembled platypuses more than fish, as I knew them to be. The water was pure, like crystal, and at this altitude we could distinguish everything down to the smallest pebble. Looking up, I saw we were approaching the ocean. Palm trees resembling coconut palms waved their majestic fronds at impressive heights, on the edge of a beach of golden sands. The blue of the ocean contrasted pleasantly with the bright red of rocks encrusted in small hills, which overlooked a section of its beach. A hundred or so people basked on the sand or swam, entirely naked, in the transparent waters of the ocean. 
I felt a little dazed, not only because of the new and wondrous things I was constantly discovering, but also because of the perpetual sensation of lightness, due to the change in gravity. This sensation was my reminder of Earth, what a strange word, and how difficult it was to visualize Earth now. The auditory and visual vibrations were also affecting my nervous system enormously. Usually a highly strung person, I was feeling completely relaxed, as if I had plunged into a warm bath, allowing myself to float in the bubbles while soft music played. No, even more relaxed than that, so relaxed I felt like crying. We proceeded, quite rapidly, across the waters of the immense bay, flying about 12 meters above the waves. On the horizon, I could distinguish several dots, some larger than others, and I realized these were islands, no doubt those I had seen prior to our landing on Thauba. As we headed for the smallest island, I looked below and saw that we were being followed by numerous fish, amusing themselves by Chris crossing the shadow our vehicle projected on the water. Are they sharks? I asked. No, they're Dajiks, the brothers of your dolphin. You see, they are as fond of playing as your dolphins are. Look, I interrupted thou, look, thou looked to where I was pointing and began laughing, I was astonished to see a group of people approaching us, seemingly without the aid of a vehicle. They were about two meters above the water, in a vertical position, and not only floating in the air, but moving quite rapidly towards us. Soon our paths crossed and grand gestures of friendship were exchanged. At the same instant, a wave of well-being flowed through me lasting several seconds. It was the same sensation Latoli had produced and I recognized it as a sign of greeting from these flying people. How do they do that? Is it levitation? No, they have a terra. On their waists an alidiolac. In their hands. The terra is an apparatus worn like a belt when you wish to fly. The lidiolac works in concert with the terra to fly, but is held in the hand. These produce certain vibrations that neutralize the cold magnetic force of the planet, allowing neutralization of the gravitational force. Even a weight of millions of tons compares with that of feathers. Then, by other vibrations resembling those of ultrasound, they can steer themselves precisely to wherever they choose, as they are doing now. On this planet, everyone wanting to travel some distance uses this method. Then why are we using this vehicle? I asked, for I would have loved to experiment with such equipment, which, by the way, was absolutely noiseless. Michelle, you are impatient. I have brought you by this means because you are not capable of flying with a lidiolac. Without practice, you could hurt yourself. Later, perhaps, if there is time, I will teach you how to use it. Look, we are nearly there. Indeed, we were fast approaching an island and could clearly see a golden beach where several people basked in the sun. Almost immediately, we were flying beneath palm fronds along a wide path, bordered with two rows of flowering and very fragrant bushes. The area was alive with the sound and color of insects, butterflies and birds. The vehicle proceeded slowly at ground level and, after a final bend in the path, we arrived before a little egg, nestled among small trees and flowering vines. It seemed that every building on this planet had the shape of an egg, most often lying on their sides, but occasionally upright, as I have said, with the pointed end upwards. The shells were off-white in color and had no windows or doors.